<clears throat> All right. Hi, everyone. We are live. Today is our talk about runes. Before I get started on my little segment, here is a few announcements that she wants to make. Right. Again, I want to remind everybody about the community night on Friday night and the change of location. Everybody's so used to Aberdeen Sobeys now that we really want to make sure that nobody goes there Friday night. It's Stellarton. It's by the LDM Park. It starts at 7 p.m. So there is also a time change. And um, I also want to uh, tell you next week on our podcast, we are going to be joined with the lovely Robin Murdoch. And she is going to be talking, starting astrology. Start you yeah, at the basics. basics yeah, and then work just, our way up. We'll yeah. probably ask Robin back several times as people get where ready for the next level. I assume it goes in stages. You don't just learn everything when you no, just you start. No, you don't learn everything at once. No. And it's just more or less an introduction to see <clears throat> about the different aspects, the different planets. and Perfect. The perfect way. Well, we're looking forward to next week. I'm looking forward to it. The only thing I know about astrology is that I read my horoscope. I don't even read it in the paper anymore. I read it on my uh, Facebook. Oh, no. So I'm looking to build some skills to actually maybe forecast my own horoscope. Exactly. I'm a multi-talented exactly. lady then. Yep. And then the week after that, we are going to have Jennifer Collins. She is going to show us. She's a psychic medium, and she is going to be a guest on that show with us. So make sure... Uh, you ask your questions off both these lovely ladies. And um, that is the lineup we have right now. I do know sometime in January, Mystic Mike, Mike Thompson, he's going to be a guest on our show. And if you think of anybody you want on the show, let us know, because we're more than willing to reach out and invite people on the show. You don't want to look at mine and Swords mug every single week. As handsome as we are, well, handsome as he is and lovely as I am. Um, and the other thing I want to say is share. Share the page, share the podcast, let everybody know. Because that's the whole point of it all is just getting all this information out to everybody. So I'm going to turn it back over to Stuart and mm -hmm. you can start. I'm also going to be interjecting questions because mm -hmm. Terry does have some wonderful questions to ask you. Okay. So um, I think I'm going to start off my little segment by talking about where the runes originally come from. In terms of historic, the runes have been found mm -hmm. out throughout mm -hmm. most of Europe, mm -hmm. Russia, uh, the Mediterranean, and even in some parts of Africa and the Eurasian mountains. They were used as a language and as a form of writing, and in that sense, they have been dated back to at least 2000 BC, oh, wow. but there are also signs that have shown that it may have gone back even further. From a historical context, it is suggested that they may have either been the basis for mod the modern day alphabet or they may have been influenced at a later date. Can I interject yes. a question here? So what you're saying is your rooms are older than my cards. Yes. Are they older as a method of divination? Um, before they were even used as writing, they were primarily made and used for divination and for magical uses. Wow. That's they crazy. actually were used as a form of writing after they were used for magic. Uh, going back to that, in terms of where they originated in, from mythology, they were thought to have originally been Norse in origin, and in the creation story for how they came to be, it was said that the Father God Odin hung himself from the world tree for nine days upside down. And after the nine days, the runes appeared beneath him. And it was actually him taking the runes from the world tree that gave the Norse gods their power. Oh, really? And it is then taught that Thor, or um, not Thor, uh, Odin taught the runes to Freya and the other... Um, gods of the Norse, and she then taught them, or Odin taught uh, Freya the runes, and then she taught the other Norse gods. Odin also taught the runes to Heimdall, which is the guardian of the uh, guardian of Madras of the world tree, so and he's the one who taught 
the runes to human copies. Justin, pass one of the box over there with the triangles. I just want to show the Odin symbol because you're the reason it came to the store. It's got, yeah. it's made out of wood, it's got three triangles on it. Yep, that one. This is just an FYI. This is the Odin symbol. I'm going to bring it up close to the mic or the camera so that you can see it. Is that a clear shot, Kai? There's a delay. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the delay. Sorry, everybody. So, hopefully, that was a nice clear shot. And uh, Stuart's the one who actually brought the Norse mythology to me. Remember that? Yes. Sorry, I just no, okay. added to it. That was good. So, in the runes, there are the runes are broken down into three groups of eight, and each group is called an etef. The first etef is the etef of Freya, and they are the runes of the earth. The second is the etef of Heimdall, and they are called the runes of uh, the warrior, or the um, runes of man, kind of thing. And then the third one is the etef of Odin, and those are the runes of related to divinity. So, um, there was a question that was brought up by Terry, you were mentioning, yes. and I want to address that before I start getting into the actual runes. All right. Do you want the number one? Sure. Is the direction you cast the stones important, such as north, south, east, and west? I personally do not have any directional association whenever I cast my runes. I know that for some people it does make it easier. If you are going to be using your direction, though, um, it would have to do with what kind of an element you're affiliated with. He was also mentioning that as well. Yeah. Um, if you are affiliated with the element of water, you want to cast to the south. If you are affiliated with fire, you want to cast to the west. If you're affiliated with wind, you want to cast to the east. And if you're affiliated with earth, you want to cast to the north. Interesting. I'm going to pause. Mm -hmm. I forgot to say this too. We welcome your comments. We welcome your questions. Jump on the page and let us know what you want to know. Sorry, okay. we forgot to do that. It's okay. And um, there was other questions he asked? The other questions. Um, do you ask the deity for guidance before casting? I personally, once again, I do not ask a deity for any guidance in my casting, but at the same time, if it helps you, you are able to do that. All right. And does it... Oh, this uh, is... just a second. Sorry. Um, another thing that I was going to mention is that I've actually gone and found what each rune is associated with. So if you want to incorporate that into your... When you are doing a cast, you can... Um, I'll talk about which rune is associated with which gods. They are, however, associated with the Norse gods. Okay. Terry, this is your question. Like, does it matter where you cast the stones? For example, on the ground, in the woods, mm -hmm. on the beach, by water? Um... Again, it comes down to what makes you the most comfortable and what can help you. I will point out, though, that in terms of the material that you are using for the runes, in terms of where you're casting and how you cast them, it all comes down to what is going to make you more comfortable. But in the end, you have to have more of a connection with the runes as opposed to where it is, what you're using for material, what direction. It comes down to connecting with the rooms. Also, like the cards, you gotta you gotta play yeah. with them, you gotta handle them, you gotta get to know them and let them know you. Yes. Perfect. Do you want Terry's last question? Sure. If someone has strong shields or an overwhelming presence, good or bad, can it affect the reading? I have encountered it a few times where it has affected a reading. And to answer the question, the what the way I'll put it is that the runes don't necessarily divine the future. They are more of a way of showing you what kind of path you are currently on. And in that respect, they are commonly used in order to find out what the outcome will be so that you can then make the changes if they are necessary or to change the outcome. I have, the way I, another way I can put it is that they don't necessarily divine the future of yourself, but the future of nature around you. So that if there is an event that is going to happen in the future, it's going to tell you based on what you're currently doing. So just for example, if the path you're currently on and you're asking a question about finance, 
But let's say that the path you're currently on, you're just sitting at home, you're not looking for a job, you're not applying yourself, you're not trying to make product to sell, anything like that there, you're just hoping to win the lottery kind of a thing. The rooms are going to tell you to get off your bus, start applying, start working and doing something. And Basically they're saying, give me a direction to show you. Right. But they're telling you the direction of where you have to go. And you can take their advice and you can do what they're telling you to do and that will put you into the path that they're currently seeing. However, if there's also the chance of, let's say you do a cast and the rooms are going to warn you about someone being sick, someone dying, someone being injured, that could be taken as a warning and you can then use that advice in order to change the outcome of that event. That actually makes me ask another question. Sometimes, it, where I have such a strong connection with my parents, I've had them for over 20 years, mm -hmm. like, I treat them better than I ever treated my kids. Yeah. Um, I, my parents, in situations, have warned me that there's stuff I don't want to see, mm -hmm. especially if it's someone I'm close to when I'm reading. Do you get that? Yes, very oh. frequently, actually. But um, the rooms, like I said, they will be flat out blunt. I have had people, or I have done readings before where it's warned, oh yeah, you're going to get a car accident, kind of thing, if you don't be careful. Or there's going to be a death in your family, so it's going to get sick. They, they're in, like I was going back to the whole origin of them, they're supposed, to, in mythology, they're what gave the gods themselves power in Norse mythology. They don't care about hurting your, feelings. hurting your feelings. They're a force of nature. If they have something that they want to say and if there is something that they want to make evident to you, they don't care if it's going to hurt your feelings, they're going to tell you. And they also don't care what you do with the knowledge they show you. Exactly. You have the option of taking that knowledge and then going out and changing your path, or you can just accept it and go with the outcome. Interesting. I find in some ways they're very similar. Your cast has similarities to my layout, your information. I, I think it's pretty fascinating. I wish I was more drawn to it. <laughs> um, I won't talk too much about casts and layouts um, tonight. That is a topic we can cover another night, possibly, because there is a lot of um, different options and different layouts. And when it comes down to rooms, how rooms land in association with other rooms, um, if a rune is reversed, if they're in conjunction with other runes, can change their meanings, can change their associations, can give you a different readings, depending on what kind of shape they land in, how they land, how far away they land from each other, can all give different meanings and associations. So that is something I would like to cover at a different night, or actually, what I'm thinking I might do is I might cover that during my community night. Oh, cool. Because it will give us a chance to have a more hands-on event as well. And, and people can see closer. Yes. Okay, so that would be great. That yeah. That would be great. I think that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll cover that more. Oh, I think we have, we have a question. question. James Edward, uh, is there a way to change your outcome if it's not positive? Yes. As I was mentioning before, the runes are going to tell you about the path that you are currently on. So. Let's just for example go back to the whole someone's going to be injured if that's the outcome of the reading. In the cast, it will also give you events that are going to be or pertaining to leading up to what's going to cause that injury or cause that event. And you are able to then use that information in order to change the outcome kind of thing. So let's for example say that the cast will, as I was mentioning, talks about someone being injured. Well, let's say that it also talks about in the cast that they're going to be injured by a emotional dispute with a, another man during the time of the spring season. Well, you're then able to take that information and warn them and give them advice and say, hey, when it comes to spring, you may want to watch about who you're talking to and how you address them, because if not, you're not going to have a good time. True. That, and again, it's up to them what they do. I just want to say, hey, Linda. Linda joins us here. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Hi. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. I have to greet everybody. <laughs> it's my nature. Okay. 
So if we don't have any more questions right now, I'm going to start going into the runes themselves. Yeah. I have little cue cards here, and each card has the rune on it, as well as the pronunciation, the associated god. Do you get the holes? I have the whole set right here. Oh, wow. Get out your pens and paper, people. Start making notes. Okay. So our first rune is Fehu. It is the rune for cattle. It is a rune associated with wealth. It is a rune for material gain, fulfillment, overcoming an opposition, overcoming greed, and a sign of power. Oh, you want to give me a bucket full of that? <laughs> if the rune is shown in reverse, which is nothing, something else I will also talk about again more in detail in my community night, but if a rune is in reverse and it is obscured upside down, if you're using rune stones, it might be the saw that's facing towards the table as opposed to facing up. But if a rune is, if the Fehu rune is obscured, then it's a sign of disappointment, loss, and pending arguments. All right, my bucket will make sure they're all upright. <laughs> okay. All right. I almost forgot. I mentioned before that I have whatever god or goddess they are associated with. Fei Hu is associated with the goddess Freya. That sounds right. Women, the nurturers. <laughs> Want to make sure everybody's pockets are full. Yeah. Okay. Are they, just a, a quick question before I continue, are they showing up well in the stream? Yeah, they are. Okay. Comment and let us know if you can see them clearly, people. Uh, if you could move up a little bit, it wouldn't hurt. But... Okay. Is that better? Uh, we're still on the last rune right now. Okay, so we're going to try this for now, and we'll adjust based on. So our second rune is Uruiz. It is the rune for strength and represents a wild ox. It is associated with the god Four. It is a sign of physical strength, potential, good health, and an outside influence. If the rune is in reverse, it is a sign of weakness, being weak-willed, illness, and missed opportunities. Okay. Our third rune is Thoris is Thorisas. Is represent of foreign and or giant. The tra actual translation is a bit debated because it has different meanings depending on if it is Anglo-Saxon, Germanic, or Scandinavian in origin. Each region has a different meaning, but it's usually either thorn or giant. In the case of thorn, it is a sign of protection, and it is associated with the god Haranger. It, it is a rune of counsel, non-action, luck, and be warned of an outside event. And if it's associated with giant, it is a rune to symbolize and to give warning of a negative entity such as a troll, demon, a giant, frost giant, that kind of thing. If it is in reverse, well, it is usually sideways in a cast. And it is a sign of stubbornness, being foolish, and not following the advice of others. This one's Uh, just to, in your palm, where you said the second last rune was a sign of weak will, one of the mounts in your hand can indicate that too. I'm not going to let all my mm -hmm. secrets out right now. And um, stubborn, the shape of your fingernails tells me whether or not you're stubborn. Okay. If they all connect yeah. somehow. They all have exactly. similar points at the base where they, they, they connect. It's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. So our next one is Ansuis. It is the god it is the rune for God and wisdom and it is associated with the god of Odin. It is a rune of advice, trials, inspiration, and a new student or to be a mentor to someone. If it is in reverse, it is a rune to represent trickery, outside interference, and being deceived. Our next one is Ray Through. It is the rune for wheel and journey, and it is associated with the god <coughs> Thor. It is a rune to symbolize messages, a new profession, control, 
action and to go out and explore. If the rune is in reverse, it is a it represents upsets in plans, delays to be lost or to feel lost, and an unexpected point to travel. So that could be having to go, for example, I mean, you wouldn't want to read the truck driver, so you get that yeah. all over the place. But in terms of unexpected travel, it could mean suddenly having to go and travel somewhere else to go meet someone, maybe a funeral kind of thing. But it's to have to go and leave and upheave your life kind of thing in and order planning. to go somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Our next one is Cain Oz. It is represented by it is the rune for wood and or torch, and it's associated with energy. It is associated with the god Nerthus. It is... <coughs> excuse me. When it is associated with wood, it is a sign for positivity, love, and or lust, depending on how uh, what other rune is associated with, as well as knowledge and being able to create or inspire others. When it is associated with torch, it is represented of vision, revelation, fire, and healing by regeneration. When it is in reverse, it is another one that would be on its side because you can't go up or down because of the way it is shaped. When it is in reverse, it represents death, disease, termination, exposure, and false hope. <laughs> Question for every the wet man's dream. Has she had a room reading done? Who said that? James Edward. Oh my god. <laughs> You're horrible. I can't believe you put that. Um anyways, now everybody knows my embarrassing drunk story. Thanks, Jim. Um Yes, Stuart has read my runes and I don't invite anybody to guest read at my store unless I have one hundred percent confidence in them. My name is too new to take a chance on someone who's going to blow up in my face. I know that sounds really conceited, but I want to build a reputable store and I want people to know that they can trust all the readers here. So yes, I was the first person Stuart ever read in my store and I was actually very pleased with my reading. I think he was very detailed. I think he was very, very accurate. And, uh, in some ways, I wish he hadn't been so accurate. <laughs> but, it is something I've actually had people mention a few times, but I do do repeat this because, like I said, they don't care about what they're going to say. They're just going to say it. There's been a few readings where they will bring up events that are very personal, very private, that yeah. people don't want to know about. There has also been times where I've done readings and instead of talking about the person who's getting the reading, it's talked about other people that are in their lives, mm -hmm. children, parents, siblings, that kind of thing. And it'll talk about them because they're, you know, with the advice that they're being given by the rooms, they're able to make a change or change the outcome of what those other people are experiencing. But I do want to say this. He is definitely worth the money that he, he charges for his readings. I, I think he was totally worth it. I, I just have full confidence in Stuart, same as I have full confidence in Zen. I won't bring anybody in here unless I trust them myself. Okay. Is there any more questions? Uh, no, there's a comment. And Lawrence earlier said, never seen these before, the runes, and just comment. That's why we're here, honey, to bring you all kinds of new knowledge. And hey, Anne, it's nice to see you. And then good for you, hon, so honest. Then Edna Lyons said, hi guys, sorry oh. for being late, but I'm here. Hey Edna, we're always happy to see you, honey. <laughs> I missed a few comments, that was it. Well, let's My try bad. and catch up while we're doing this pause. Is there any more comments? Oh, oh, perfect. And Edna, it's always wonderful to have you guys join us. So we'll go back to your rooms now. Okay, so getting back to the rooms, our next one is Gabo. It is the room for a gift or to be a partner and is associated with the god of Odin. It is a room to symbolize love, to receive a gift from a loved one or from a friend, to receive a gift in general. So all those girls waiting for diamonds. <laughs> Hope you see this one in your reading. And it is also um, 
a room for being very fortunate to receive unexpected things. Oh, give me a bucket full of that, too. <laughs> and is also associated with the divine union between two people. When it is in reverse, again, it is a room that cannot necessarily be up or down, so it is usually done on the side. I will also point out that when I make my rooms, that this room, um, or my gabo, is different than what most people will see in your standard um, set of rooms. It is usually depicted as a, just a pure X. Uh, like Do you want me to just, grab yours? Um, <clears throat> oh, crap. But when most people do see this, it's okay, it's going to be too small. I hope we put it up nice and close, they might see it. But, um... It's that one, right? It's, yes. Okay. We're gonna try. See if you can get a good shot. Too close. Oh, it was a bit too close. It probably is on the server. How's that? Well, uh... It's still not trying to delay. Alright, well... And Lawrence it... said, so need to get in for readings from Boat. And did you do these cards up yourself? Yes. I did do these cards up myself. But, um... Anyways, in most standard sets of runes, Gabo is just depicted as an X, and in that sense, it's another. It's one of the runes that cannot have a reversed reading using dice or any other kind of divination unless it is just on a standard rune set where it can be upside down. So in mine, I give it an off kilt or a bit of a different design so that it can show up and be reversed. That's clever. So. In this sense, if it's on its side, just like Thor, or um, one of the ones before, this would be the reversed form of it. When it is reversed, it is a sign of emotional problems, loneliness, being dependent on others, and being too willing to sacrifice yourself for another person. Okay, our next one is Veyo. It is the sign, or is the room, of wind and harmony, and it is associated with the goddess Frigg. It is a room to symbolize blessing, joy, affection, and desires. When it is in reverse, it is a sign of misery, fear, um, being headstrong, and being dissatisfied with the current situation. Not a room, is it? No, not when it's in reverse. So, the ones that we just finished covering was the first F, actually, and those were the F of Freya. So she's mean as well as nice. <laughs> yes. So, the next F, or set that we're going to talk about, actually, is the F of Heimdall. So, the first one is Hegalas. Hegalas it is a sign of hail, limitations, and is associated with the goddess Heimdall. Or God Heimdall, sorry. It is a room to represent upheaval, the wrath of nature, to be risky, to have delays, and the foreshadowing of a negative event in the future. When it is in reverse, which will be on its side, again, because it is one of those rooms that cannot have an up or a down. When it is in reverse, it is a sign to represent a negative payoff, a disruption in your life, to be stagnant, and pain, loss, and suffering. So, Robin, we know you, I know you, have a little bit to do with stones. I don't know how much, we never really <laughs> talked about it. Are you finding this information? This, it's pretty much, yes, pretty much the same, like some of the pronunciation and, of course, a lot of the history and whatnot. But I have a question for you, too, sort Okay. Do you use a, a blank room as the 25th room, or no? Like the unknown or yes. whatever it is. Um, I was actually talking to Carrie about this we earlier today, and the blank rune was only added within the last 50 to 100 years. Okay. And as I was mentioning, the runes themselves have been used since at least 2000 BC. And there is no sign or historical backup for the rune outside of the last 50 to 100 years. And as anyone who has done divination or any kind of fortune telling can tell you, there is no such thing as no answer. Okay. okay. It may not be yeah. the answer you want, but there's always an answer. answer. Yeah. Yeah. The most commonly or accepted reason for why it was added actually was for the resurrection of the language of the Elder Fukar, which is what the runes are called. 
and it's thought that it was added about a hundred years ago in order to act as the space that we use in English writing. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah. I had another question for you. I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> All right. So I'll get back to the reason. Do you get any questions? No. Uh, James, that's James, isn't it? Yeah. Jim says hello, Robin. Hey, Jim. <laughs> you should have came tonight, Jim. Okay. Our next room is now these. It is this room for need and patience. It is associated with the god of Skald. It is a room to represent omens, stress, obstacles, being to feel the need of necessity, to think that you need something above all else. It is a room of distress and confusion, and it can also symbolize that you have to endure what you're currently going through. I see, I already got a bucket full of that. <laughs> <laughs> when the rune is in reverse, it is symbolic of poverty, stagnation again, extreme want, and a lack of freedom. I seriously don't ever want that one in my reading today. <laughs> there was just something I was or thinking about that just popped into my head I'm sorry. about this, but I just no, it was as I was talking about it, it popped into my head that I remembered it. Oh, right, I'll need this. Can you hold this for a second, yep. please? Okay, I'm gonna need those in a second. Facing to with it. the black, it doesn't matter. Okay. I'll, I'll take them when I need them. Okay, our next room is Esau, it is the room of ice, static, and is associated with the goddess Verandau. It is a room to represent energy loss, separation, focus, privacy, ill feelings, and to be frustrated. When it is in reverse, it represents a breach in loyalty, to be dull or blind to the current situation. It is a room of betrayal and to have a hidden influence in your life. So, I'm just going to take these from Carrie. These three rooms here, Esa, God, sorry, Esa, now these, and Hagathas, Hagath Hagath oh, excuse me, are actually the three rooms of stagnations and limitations. They are, as I was just going through, you can probably tell, they are very We'll call them negative runes because they are meant to represent the limitations of humanity. Okay. Okay. Our next room is Yera, it is the rune for harvest and the cycle of the year, and is another rune associated with Freya. It is a rune to represent reward. Peace, commitment, hope, the cycle of an event, and to have something be a season or an upcoming event, for example, if it um, lands with certain other runes, it could mean spring, summer, winter, fall. I've had it show up a few times with some other runes to represent Christmas, which is kind of ironic because of the runes that will come up to symbolize for us. <laughs> I've done several readings this month where it has mentioned Christmas, and every time that it will mention Christmas, it will have this rune here as well as the rune of giving gifts, and it will also have the runes for stress, anxiety, and family problems <laughs> in association with it. <coughs> and if that isn't um, Christmas, things. I don't know what it is. We get, we get a question from the comments for you. Okay. Sure. And Lawrence asks if one should have experience before dabbling with these at home. Um, I think it's kind of what the show is about to give you an yeah. introduction. So if you want to dabble, you know, you yeah. come and see us. We're always willing to share. Well, I guess Carrie was mentioning if you have more questions about it, you want a more one to um, one in, um, introduction to them. No, oh, excuse me. You're more than welcome to come down to the store and talk to us. But if you are interested in using them at home, this is kind of meant as an introductory kind of thing. And they are no more different in terms of what we'll call it, in terms of being dangerous than a pendulum or a set of tarot cards. 
Uh, I also think, I just want to point out, <clears throat> that is the whole purpose of the podcast and the community nights, is so that everybody can have access to the information for whatever they're interested to or attracted to. And I think, like with all methods of divination, it's what you feel connected or called to. Like for me, it's palms and tarot. For you, it's rooms. For some people, it's tea leaves. You know, if you get more into the voodoo, Santeria culture, it's chicken bones and stuff like that. It's, it's whatever you feel connected to, and we're just trying to show you the options that are out there for what you're interested in. Oh, we got two more questions from Edna Lyons. Um, how long is it for a reading with you, and can you just walk in, or do you take appointments? Uh, we do take point, or I do take appointments. I am booked in every two weeks for guaranteed dates. But I am in here most days, and I'm not working somewhere else. But I want to point out, you have another job, so you can't yes. always so be I here. So I'm not always here, so but I do. So are hit and miss. Yes. But if you come in and he's here, have at it. And in terms of time, it depends on how blunt and straightforward the runes want to be. I've unfortunately had readings where it's only taken about five or six minutes, because it'll just be exactly the point and tell the person's smart enough and get done. And I've also had readings before where I've actually had to do the cast more than once because it will have to, it will allude to another event that it wants to talk about. So it could take anywhere from six minutes, it could take up to an hour, it all depends on yeah, how the it wants for to go. You said where you'll cast and it will allude to another event. Will it give full detail? Or does that depend on the person you're reading? It depends on the person that I'm reading, but at the same time, if it's talk, the rooms can talk about something that has happened in the past. They can talk about something that is happening in the present. They can talk about something that's going to happen in the future. The rooms will be as exact as that person needs them to know about. Sometimes they will give vague warnings. Sometimes they will give an exact set of events. What it comes down to is that the rooms are going to give you the hints and point you into the right direction of you needing to know what you need to know. So is it more question specific or as it generalized? Can be, it can be question specific. Ugh, I just <laughs> slaughtered that word. It can be for a specific question, but I personally prefer to do generalized readings because if there is something that the rooms want to tell you, it doesn't matter what question you're asking, they're gonna tell you anyways. Okay, I have one more question for you. Okay. Take your drink first. We'll, we'll allow you to do that. We're not that mean. <laughs> we got one more question. Oh, we got another question before mine. Um, Edna Lyons says, so what days are you in the shop? Um, I'm in most days where I'm not working somewhere else. So that would be Monday to Saturday, unless I am not here. But I am guaranteed to be in every second week on Wednesday. Yeah, today was your day. Yes. Next Wednesday will be Jennifer's. The yes. Jennifer, sorry. And then the week after that, it's you again. Um, his days are posted on the Facebook calendar of events. And you can book through me. I will always make sure he's aware of when he has bookings. Right. Another thing, too, is that if you do want to book for a certain day on the Wednesday to guarantee it, if I'm able to work with my schedule, I might be able to take bookings for other days, but once again, it comes down to if I'm available or not. Sure. So, my question was, um, I know you're, you prefer your desk. Yes. And I think they're cool as can be. Um, Rune stones have 25 stones, including the blank, right? Yes. 25. So, yours... Are six-sided dice? Yes. Can you explain that a little bit? Like, what does it mean in a reading? Like a fuller reading? Like, I'm sorry, I'm not sure exactly what you're... So, in 25, you're limited to 25. Yes. But with yours, you're not guaranteed a different symbol. Some of your symbols can be repeated. Yes. With different rules. Yes. So what does that mean for a reading? Um, with my dice, each room is able to show up six different times, and that's personally why I prefer to use my dice. Because with your standard set of rune stones, each rune is only able to show up once. So if they're trying to tell you about an event that might involve different people, so like, for example, maybe it's, it's want to tell me about an event that's going to involve two women or two men, 
or maybe the rune for um, harmony has to show up more than once and it's able to. But if you're just using your standard set of runes, then it can't do that. So when I'm using my dice, I've had it show up before where one rune, for example, maybe the rune of harmony will be talking about one event where if you go with this path, then this will lead to harmony in your life. But then the heart rune of harmony will also show up somewhere Such else. Such as harmony with a partner. Right. Or a friend. Or it might show up obscured, whereas it'll talk about if you go and do this, this is going to disrupt your life kind of a thing. Okay. Does that answer? It gives a more full interpretation. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. it does answer my question. Okay. So, so we got Robin thinking yeah, now, don't yeah, we? Yeah. You're thinking about those dice, aren't you? It's interesting because like, I do have some moon stones at home, but they are just like the flat, yes. the flat moon stones, you know. And yes, like you say, you can only get them once. But sometimes they, in tarot, you fall. Right? So you have that there. But also you have this card that indicates an illness, but it could mean your dog. Exactly. And the tarot yeah. gives that fullness. Yeah. But a regular set of 25 doesn't. No, but was... Stuart's dice yeah. does. It gives more detail. <laughs> and I'll, and uh, the way best way I can put it is I'll get, just in order to get back to the roots. Um, year, year, uh, Sorry. You're just, getting overwhelmed yeah. with all this. Yera is a rune for peace. It is a rune for hope. There are other runes that are associated with peace, that are associated with hope. But this is the only one that's associated with seasons, with events, with the circle of the year. So if we're using a standard set of runes and it wants to talk about two different events throughout the year, it can only show up once. Yeah. But with the dice, if it's wanting to tell you about something that's going to happen in the fall, as well as something that's going to happen later in the spring, the rune is able to come up twice or even possibly more. Oh, okay. So, getting back to where I left off before Sorry. with this here, when this rune is in reverse, it is symbolic of a sudden setback, major changes to repeat or have to do things over again, or passing of the season or things to be seasonal in a negative sense, as in it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing or that only happens in fall kind of a thing. And sort of along the lines of, oh yes, that's already happened. Okay. Our next rune is I was. It is the rune for the yew tree and is symbolic of rebirth and is associated with the god Euler. It is a rune to represent perseverance, to go on a quest or start a new task, to, do, to start something new. It is a rune symbolic of conflict resulting in success. It is symbolic of de being dependable, so you're very trustworthy, you're someone who's that uh, you can rely on. And it is also a rune that can symbolize that you are protective or you need to protect yourself from, some, from something else. It is another rune that is shown in reverse by being on its side. And when in reverse, it is associated with confusion, confusion being, or des destruction, weakness, stagnation, tension, and undoing. So to uncreate. So that could be something like ending a project before it's finished, to start a task and not see it through to the end. Our next rune is Perdif. It is the rune for actually dice and destiny. And it actually goes back to why I do use dice as opposed to runestones. In many cases, they used to use dice as opposed to stones when they were doing divination because it was more convenient, it was more lightweight. If you just want to do a general reading, you only need four six-sided dice as opposed to 24 different stones. Um, it is a rune that is associated with the goddess Thrig. And it represents mystery, secrets, the occult, and foresight. But if it is paired with the right rooms, it can also represent sexuality and the act of sex. When it is in reverse, 
It is symbolic of addiction, loneliness, malice, and the, des and the intense desire for another person. Our next one is all yeats. It is a rune of the elk and it represents friendship. It is another rune that is affiliated with Heimdall. It is a rune that is symbolic of optimism, partnership, to be very fortunate to have good luck. It is symbolic of the concept of the soul, of spiritual energy. And it can also represent um, a shield, to need shelter, to need protection, maybe someone who's a guardian or very protective figure of you, and it's also a room to represent to go in your instinct. It is a very um, animalistic room in nature, I find, because it is representative of the elk. It is a room to represent to go on your instinct, to, if you need to feel protected, be protected kind of a thing. When it is in reverse, it, it represents hidden dangers, to be misled by others, to be used by others. If you're feeling vulnerable or if something is forbidden towards you, and it is also a rune when it's in reverse to repel. So to repel, it can actually be one of those runes where it's in reverse, it can be used in a positive way. So it can be used to repel negative energy to repel and then Yes. Um, if there is interest in it, I will mention it now. I can do another podcast or a community night talking I think more about to amulets and talismans. If we go over, we can go over. Okay, sorry. It's okay. We just had a lot of questions tonight. Yeah. It's a very interesting it format. It is. It's a very, I like to go and talk more in, in depth too. So, our next one and the last rune of the, um, hu or the uh, human Edith is, the, is um, So Velo, is the sign of the sun in victory and it's associated with the god Baldur. It is a rune to represent clarity, honor, rest, achievement, and feeling whole. When it is in reverse, it represents, um, False success, so being deceived by thinking you finished something. It is, <clears throat> it is a rune to represent being gullible or to receive or to receive wrath or punishment and retribution. So to be um, punished for wrongdoing kind of a thing. So that's the how do you call it? How do you say it again? Edith. Edith. That's the last of the second Edith? Yes. Okay, so we have a couple questions, and then I'm thinking um, we have Robin next week, we have Jennifer the week after that, but the week after that we have Blank, so maybe we could talk more about your room. Okay. In that case, what we might, what I will do then is we'll leave the last Edith for our next podcast, and I'll also get some stuff prepared up in our talk about talismans and... Perfect. When is your community night? I can't remember. I think it's next month. Or no, I think it's in February. Yeah, because we're pretty booked up. Yeah. So we'll, on, after Robin and Jennifer, we'll do more about the runes, finish this, and how they could be talismans. But I think there's a couple questions Carl said. Okay. Comment. And Lauren said, I found my Last few reading have been very vague, like I have so much chaos in my life, I really can't be read to the fullest, and this be what's happening to me. It could be possible, it could be that, like I mentioned in the runes, it's going to talk about the path that you're currently on, and it's going to tell you about the events that are leading up to the outcome. And the if you stay on the current path that you're on, then yes, it is just going to lead to the chaos and all that there, but at the same time, it's telling you about what you can possibly influence in terms of events in order to put yourself on a better path. Okay, and? And in that said, great job, son. Definitely has lots of experience and knowledge for anyone interested in the reading. Proud of you. Aww. Thank you. Nice. So, 
on that note, we're going to wrap it up then, and we're going to leave the rest of the topic for, for at least part two, I guess. Well, and we'll finish up with the last Edith. And there's we just will, so much. There is. They're, they're very detailed. And mm -hmm. I would love to spread it out over two shows and give it the proper attention yeah. it's due. I don't want to rush through. No. No, that wouldn't be fair. No, it wouldn't. And I, I just wanted to have the proper attention it's due. It's a very, okay. very interesting topic. All right. If I'd have known that. <laughs> It was so detailed. Yeah. But um, next time that you see me talking about runes, then you're either going to be in the store, at the community night, or watching our next podcast. Or come for a reading. Or you can even come for a reading, or you can just come in and ask questions, and I can give you some advice and tell you the rest. But next time that you see me for the podcast, I will be finishing off with the last Edith, and we'll be talking about um, talismans, amulets, and some other ways that runes are used as forms of magic and divination as well as other things. Perfect. I can't wait. Okay. I think Robin will be back for that one too. <laughs> oh, oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Two more comments. Edna Lyons says, can't wait to get a reading with you. Are you in on Saturday sometimes? Yes. And then and Lawrence said, so I want one from your store. It never had one before. Thanks. It's that a great is, experience. Yes. The, um, that is sort of the reason why we want to do a community night and a podcast and all that there on Runestones is that there's not a lot of people in Pico County. There's not a lot of people in anywhere is really that I've seen that do do readings with Runestones. I do know some people that do do them personally, but only because I've looked for other rune readers, but it's not a method that a lot of people even use in divination, let alone a method that people can go out and request and find easily. So we wanted to do the um, podcast and the community and I could talk about it in order to just let people know that there is actually a resource for it around here. Mm -hmm. Well said. And definitely. And we just, we just want to Bring as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Bring all the information. Yeah. Exactly. So with that being said, I think this is a good place to say good night to everybody. To thank you. I don't there's any more comments. Well, thank you everybody for watching. We love you all and can't wait to see you in the store. And that's it. That's me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We will see you next week as we talk about with astrology Robin. with Robin. Oh. So Robin, do you, are you ready to come on the camera for a second? How do you show everybody who you are? Oh, the I mysterious can. Robin Murdoch, folks. Get you a minute. Maybe you want to talk to Stuart for a minute? I'm not really a camera person, but anyway. But no, I'm looking forward to next week, and I really enjoyed the rooms. Thank you. I especially enjoyed, enjoyed them because, like I say, I do kind of dabble in a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. and I just found that so interesting. Very, very interesting. You have to make sure to come to the community as well. Oh, for, is that not this Friday? No. no oh, that that we we're, we're pretty booked on the community night with events, so yeah. starts around February. Oh, okay. But it'll okay. give yeah. everybody yeah. a chance to refresh and great. If there people. is a lot of people that is interested in having the community night for rooms sooner. I when I was talking about renting the place, it said that it's open on most Fridays. So if there is enough interest, we could possibly bump it off the book. It would just be on one of our non-normally scheduled days. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, that would be good. Yeah. That would be good. Be really and then again, in the new year, we're also going to have you at a community night talking oh, astrology yeah. again. Okay. If these topics, you yeah. can have so many um, forums because there's always something different to talk about. There is just so much Another information out there. part of it, too, is that it's good to have the podcast because me, Carrie, and you can sit down and discuss, and we have our questions. We have the people that are coming in kind of the bang. Yeah. But then to have the community night as well in order to supplement it is yeah. just so much better because there's a difference between watching two people talk on the screen and exactly. getting to actually sit there and interact and see the communication between them. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. no. Um, and I see here it says, sorry you missed some of it tonight, and you're wishing us a great safe night. Thank you for that. But honey, um, when it's done, it will be uploaded, and you can watch the first part that you did miss. That's one of the great things about this, is you can always watch it on your time at parts that you missed. Yeah, it is something I will mention, is that 
every time that we do go live, it is nice to have people watch live with us and communicate and interact. But after every show, our videos are also uploaded to Facebook. And we also upload them to YouTube and they're archived there as well. On YouTube, we also are in the process of setting up links to, for Patreon and PayPal in order for people to subscribe and donate to us. Yes, yeah, so we get better to equipment. The quality of our broadcast and equipment and get better gear and do, put out better shows. But I do want to give a round of applause. We had no glitches at the start tonight. Great. That's a big it's the first deal. time for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I was going to say something that I completely forgot yet again. <laughs> My mind is like a colander. See you tonight. <laughs> so thank you everybody for joining us and look forward to next week with Robin talking about astrology. And keep sharing everything to do with the page. Let everybody know what we're offering. There's lots of people out there struggling and interested and don't know where to go to find the knowledge or the options. Mm -hmm. So just keep sharing everything, everybody. So good night all. We love you all. Have a nice night, everyone. Good night.